it's raining. Although there's actually really bright skies further south. Let's see if it actually stops, huh? No matter mind, what's going on today? Lots of CES 2023 stuff. I was busy just trying to catch up on all the tech and so forth. Too many stuff to talk about. I guess what's the first interesting thing? Apparently there is a new drone from Autel. This one here says the Evo Max 4T. This definitely sounds more like an enterprise drone. It says it's here introducing the brand new Evo Max 4T. The Evo Max 4T is an intelligent innovative flight platform perfect for enterprise and prosumer applications. Its advanced autonomous flight technology and AI features gives it powerful self-reliance and navigation capabilities. The Evo Max 4T has omnidirectional obstacle avoidance sensors and tri-anti-interference capability to ensure flight safety and stability in high interference environment like urban environments. So that's expected with these types of drones, thermal cameras and all that. Although this one, it sounds like they're actually focusing on things like payload as well. Because it says the Evo Max 4T has a versatile payload bay that can support a variety of sensors for a wide range of applications. Its enterprise app is specifically designed to optimize cooperation between drones and pilots. The drone can perform semi-autonomous flight missions, autonomous pathfinding, live streaming, target acquisition, and more. And as an example, I guess, of their target audience, they say things like, what, search and rescue, firefighting, support, mapping, and inspection. So, well, above, they did say prosumer. I don't know if this would be a prosumer drone because the price would be outrageous, I would imagine. It'd be meant more for enterprise solutions, and they don't actually list a price, but I guess there's a new drone coming out. And just general specs, it's weather rating is IP43, flight time about 42 minutes it says, while hovering 38, wind resistance 27 miles per hour. I wonder if that would be the case again this year where there were so many announcements for commercial or enterprise types of drones versus just the regular consumer ones. It's just a bigger market for a lot of people or companies I suppose. Would like to see more options in general just for the regular average person. There were a lot of vehicle announcements too and this one kind of got me interested because it talked about Google HD maps although this one has said it's meant for the vehicles initially anyways. This one says 2024 Polestar 3 gets Google's HD map. Polestar 2 gets remote Google voice controls. So can you actually literally control this wherever you are? It says the 2024 Polestar 3 will be the first vehicle to have Google's new HD map, the company today announced at CES 2023. Along with aiding the 3's driver assist, Google's HD map provides greater detail and more up-to-date info. Polestar 2 models can now be remotely controlled via devices with Google Assistant, allowing people to precondition the cabin and more. Okay, so I would assume that means, for example, like they say, kind of like opening the doors and all that versus actually driving it. That's what I assume anyways. Although I wouldn't be surprised in the future if that's what people are going to do. Click here, drive there. I read some, I guess, news reports before where that would be the future of a taxi where you can buy an autonomous car, go have it work for you, just leave it on the road. And tons of computer processor announcements as expected. For example, AMD announcing its 3D Vcache versions of some of the processors. For example, the AMD Ryzen 7950X 3D. It's available, like it says, in February. A lot of the AMD stuff actually in recent times, they got really expensive because they started to go into things, for example, like DDR5 RAM, and there's so many expensive motherboards and all that, where it makes you wonder if you should just get something in a previous generation or potentially the competitor. Because Intel apparently released a lot of new processors as well. For example, the Core i9-13900Ks. Now, a lot of these too, for the processors, like these ones, they say it could potentially, what, go at 5.6 gigahertz, for example? That's crazy, huh, when you think about it where I guess not too long ago, maybe something like three gigahertz was considered a lot. Although for a lot of these processors too, even though like for example, like the AMD, they advertise 5.7 gigahertz boost and all that, it really comes down to things like the applications and whether or not that's actually feasible in the long run. For example, how is the heat management? So you really need to like test this stuff out. So let's just see what happens once all the hype dies down and people start testing this, I suppose. Either way, lots more tech to come, I guess, in terms of this event.
As expected, the rain's dying down. See you guys later.